as human beings, we were created for a relationship. It's impossible to have a relationship with God without having relationships with one another. And as much as God loves us and he shows care and concern for us, he's holding us accountable for showing the same care and concern for one another. That's how we demonstrate the nature of the kingdom of heaven right here on earth. I'm Volante Maria. Thank you so much for tuning into the Sunday School Renaissance, formerly known as the Sanctuary Academy. Whether you've been rocking with me for years or whether it's your first time, I want to make sure that you are subscribed, like the video and share it and join me as we fulfill the great commission of spreading the gospel. This week's subject is the nature of the kingdom and we can find it in the book of Romans. The text opens with warning us about judging people. And it tells us why would you do that? Why would you judge people? Why would you try to put them down for what they've done? And it also goes on to say that we all have to face the same judgment through Jesus Christ. God is the righteous judge and judging is not our place. When we do that, we step out of line in this day and time, you hear a lot of people saying, don't judge me. Now, it does not mean that we just overlook sin and that we condone it or even enable it. But what it means is that you teach by precept and example. And the same way that God forgave your sins, you've got to give people the opportunity to get their sins forgiven by God as well. We can't get saved and then condemn everybody who is not saved as if we did something to earn our salvation because all any of us have ever earned is death. The wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. It is a gift that God has given to each of us. Therefore, none of us, not one of us has the authority to judge anyone else. Then Paul throws us a curveball that a lot of people missed. He said, if you want to judge something, judge your own behavior in terms of not becoming a stumbling block to other people. And that is powerful because he goes on to talk about unclean. And he said, nothing will be unclean in and of itself. Being unclean is established by the person who is observing and calling something else unclean. So what we have to do is make sure that we don't cause people to stumble by our actions. And you know, I'm old school sanctified. So when I grew up, it was the big four, smoking, drinking, adultery, and fornication. Those were the four that were just going to send you straight to hell. And a lot of the other things kind of got overlooked and swept under the rug. And so you had certain things that were judged very harshly. And then there were certain things or certain people where we looked the other way. So here, Paul is charging us to be fair, do things the right way. You can't condemn somebody just because they do something that you don't like, or just because they sin differently than you sin, because all unrighteousness is sin. And so instead of judging other people, let me check myself. Let me monitor my actions. Let me make sure that I'm not doing anything or saying anything that's going to cause my brother to stumble or cause my brother to fall along the wayside. So if I cause my brother or sister to stumble and then they fall and then I turn around and I judge them because they fell, that's not fair. That's not godly. So, so instead of judging them, monitor our own actions and make sure that we're not doing anything to cause somebody else to stumble. Then he takes it further in terms of not offending your brother. And he talks about not eating meat if meat is going to destroy your brother. And that's a really strict teaching. But he tells us this because as Christians, our number one goal should be bringing people to Christ. I shouldn't be so preoccupied with what I want and what I like 
that I prioritize that over my brother and sister if they are stumbling over it and if it is destroying them. Because he said the kingdom of heaven is not meat or drink. And that is so important for us to understand. The kingdom of God is righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. And this next part is really powerful because it says it is accepted by God and approved of men. See, we love that scripture about being instant, in season, and out of season, and not being afraid of their mean faces. And sometimes we want to tell ourselves that people don't like us or reject us because we're saved. But this verse right here is saying that you can't just walk around saying, I don't care what anybody thinks or says of me. This says, accepted by God and approved of men. We need to be able to attract somebody to the kingdom of God. People should see a light in us that draws us to Christ. The spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, is not going to repel people. I say this all the time. If you're on your job and you're saved, you should be one of the best employees. If you're at school, you should be one of the best students. We should not always be disgruntled and argumentative where no one can get along with us. This passage is telling us that we have a responsibility. God is holding us accountable for how we make our brothers and sisters feel. feel. Then it also goes on to talk about doing good. Sometimes we think that as long as we're doing good, then that's it. That's all we have to be accountable for. But this tells us not to let your good be evil spoken of. And then it goes as far. Paul goes as far as to challenge our faith. That is a serious challenge because if you believe in God and if you trust Jesus, it won't bother you if you have to give up something that you like in order to advance his kingdom and to show people the love of God through the way that you treat them. That's what faith will do with you. Then it also goes on to talk about doing good. Sometimes we think that as long as we're doing good, then that's it. That's all we have to be accountable for. But this tells us not to let your good be evil spoken of. And then it goes as far. Paul goes as far as to challenge our faith. That is a... And the last line of this text says that if it is not faith, it is sin point blank. So we don't want all of our good deeds to be done and, and all of this work to be done. And it's still counted as sin because it wasn't done in faith, considering our brothers and sisters as the word tells us to do. You know, I have a background in marketing and I'm always talking about branding and always representing your brand accurately. Well, we are marketing Jesus, right? We're representing his brand. So it's bigger than me, what I like and what I don't like. I need to always prioritize representing Jesus and the way that he loves every single one, every single person that God created. We don't have the right to discard anyone because we didn't create anyone. And as much as God created the person, the person has value. And as children of God, we have to represent the love of God and consider them in our everyday life. And that is how we demonstrate for the world the kingdom of God.